When using configure devices with a tape drive, you're going to find a lot of very valuable options. First thing we see in this window is it shows us the name of the tape library at the very top. Below that shows us the tape drives that are inside that library, and then what we call an import export slot, and then the actual slots for the tape devices that are inside the library. Currently our tape drives are empty, but if I would like to load a tape into the drive, I can easily click on the icon for the tape name and drag it upwards into the tape drive. Retrospect will then move the media from the slot into the actual tape drive. Once the tape enters the drive, it will begin to report busy as the header of the tape is loaded. Retrospect will then change to running. We'll also see other valuable information inside this window. If the tape has a barcode, Retrospect will report the actual barcode in this column over here. It will also show you whether the tape in slot 3 or whatever slot it might be is in the drive or not at that moment. If you have a tape that has an unknown name, by clicking on it and dragging it into the drive, Retrospect will display for you the actual name for that tape. Retrospect will then load the header of the tape and display that name along with any other appropriate information about the barcode. Once the tape is loaded, we can do other things. If I right click on a tape, I can actually choose Erase, and then Retrospect will allow me to erase that tape. For now, we're going to choose Properties. When I choose Properties, Retrospect shows us specific information about the tape that's in the drive. You'll also notice Retrospect has some additional icons within the Properties window. The first icon here is to enable or disable tape alerts for that specific model of tape drive. We also have an option over here for cleaning interval. If we choose that, we can tell Retrospect what the cleaning interval should be in hours for that particular tape drive. We're going to cancel this, and we're going to close this window over here. I also have the ability to, de to designate a specific tape slot as a cleaning slot. As an example, I can pick slot 4, right click, and choose cleaning slot. Retrospect will then ask me if I want to designate or reserve that slot for tape cleaner tapes. I click OK, and now this slot has been marked specifically for cleaning tapes. And this tape slot should only have a cleaning tape in it. When a scheduled backup is running and a tape cleaning is required, Retrospect will automatically look in the designated slot for a cleaning tape and then perform the cleaning operation as necessary. To remove the cleaning slot designation, you can right click and choose cleaning slot again, and then Retrospect will no longer mark that slot as a cleaning slot. If I right click on the actual tape library, I'll find some additional options under properties. Over here we have an option for Disable Enable Barcode Scanning. If your tape library does not support barcodes, then you can disable that feature. We also have an option to clear the barcode information, which is typically used for troubleshooting purposes. We also have an option called Magazine View. Let's close this momentarily and take a look at what we mean by Magazine View. Right here, Retrospect lists the total number of slots in this library 1 through 19. And if I look down below, Retrospect shows all of the designated slots in one grouping. I can also take this and I can collapse it or expand it and show 1 through 19. Now, if that is a very large list, let's say your library has 100 tapes, then what you can do is go to the library itself, go to Properties, designate the designation for the magazine containers. And we're going to go ahead and select 5 and click OK. And now Retrospect will group my tapes in batches of 5. And as we can see, I can go ahead and uh, collapse these. And you'll see different breakdowns for each of the sets of tapes. This allows me to more easily access the tapes when I have a very large library. To return the library back to the original settings, I just right click, go to Properties, and change the magazine view back to 19, and click OK. 
when I close this, I can go ahead and expand the library settings, and then Retrospect will once again show us all those library items. I can also select several tapes at once by shift clicking, and then I can choose this option that says Erase Selected. What Erase Selected will do is it will allow me to erase the selected designated tapes. And in this case, we get several warnings, and we click OK. And then Retrospect will begin to load the appropriate tapes so that it can erase them. During the erase process, Retrospect will actually utilize all the available tape drives. In this case, there are tapes in the drives that need to be removed before the actual erase can take place. So Retrospect will take those tapes, eject them from the tape drive, and then use the magazine or the library robotics to move the tapes back into the correct location. Retrospect offers another option called binding. If we go to the tab over here in the devices window called binding, we can specify a specific backup set and then we can tell Retrospect that whenever a backup takes place using that set, that we want it to use a specific tape drive in the library. If we had two different types of tape drives, this could be very valuable so that you don't write inappropriate data to a specific drive. So I can specify in this case our exchange backup set to the first tape drive. And if I highlight the mailbox backup set, I can specify the second tape drive. I can also reset this by setting it to, all, to any tape drive. And then whenever a backup runs, Retrospect will look for any available tape drive. I also have another option in the Devices window over here that says Add to Backup Set. I can highlight a specific tape, click Add to Backup Set, and then choose a backup set, and then Retrospect will add that tape to that specific backup set. If I choose the backup set, I click Add, and then Retrospect will ask us, really add media in slot 7 to that backup set. Data will be permanently lost unless it is already a member of that backup set. As you can see, using Retrospect with tape libraries is very user friendly. All you need to know how to do is be able to click on a tape and drag it into the appropriate location or right click on items so that you can erase them. Tape management is a very strong feature of Retrospect.